in this tutorial let us talk about solving set equations using venn diagram we're going to be looking at some sample questions on sets and now we can use venn diagram to solve them if you are new to set or you are just getting started or you want some kind of revision on sets you can check out our tutorial on introduction to sets and venn diagram for some quick tip so let's continue we will look at questions involving two and three sets but before we continue let us look at a quick definition of set and venn diagram set is a collection of clearly defined things objects or numbers for example collection of spoons in the kitchen or cutleries collect collection of books in the library if you're a student probably you're going to have your written materials that you used to write in schools or at home so collection of these materials is refers to as a set that is that about set again we said that set is a collection of clearly defined numbers, objects, or things. Now, what about Venn diagram? Venn diagram is a closed figure used in representing sets. As you have here, Venn diagram is a closed figure used in representing sets. And this can be in, usually in the form of a rectangle with some circles in it. So you're going to be seeing most of these examples as we continue the tutorial. Just for, for some sidebars, Venn diagram was actually developed by a man named John Venn. As we can see, the Venn in John Venn was named after him. So the man is named John Venn. And that is that about sets and Venn diagram. I'm sure you're already familiar with some basics of Venn diagram but I also like to revisit some points before we further into the class. First, let's look at a situation where we have two sets. We are going to be using we are going to be using Venn diagram to show the following equation on sets A and B. And we are going to be assuming that we have sets A and B, and we show the following equation intersection. Denoted by this symbol union, denoted by this symbol and complement. Recall that intersection refers to as the common elements between two sets, while union is a set of all the elements in both sets, and complements are what we have in the universal sets that are not in the set that we are considering. Just to cite an example, if you have an example where we have universal set to be equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we have set A, which equals to 1, 2, 3, and 4. And set B, which equals 3, 4, 5, and 6. So if you are to find A intersection B, this will be the common element between A and B, and this includes 3 and 4. If you have to find a union B, this includes all the elements we have in both A and B, and these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And lastly, if we are looking for A complement, that will be all the elements that we have in the inferior set that are not in set A, and this include 5 and 6. So that is just some quick refreshments on intersection junior and complement of sets so let's move into venn diagram we will be using venn diagram to show all the set operations that we have flipped at don't forget you are looking at venn diagram containing two sets so the first one we'll be looking at is intersection don't mind my drawing so yeah i have a venn diagram container of sets a and b we have two sets a and this is set a and this is set b so the point that marks intersection is this point. So this is A intersection B. So any element that falls in this point, in this particular range, they are the set containing the intersection of A and B, and that is A intersection B. So that is the first part. Now the second one is union. Let's look at another Venn diagram. Okay, I'll just quickly draw this. 
we have set A and set B. And to show the union, as we said, that union is a set containing all the elements that we have in both A and B. So all these points is going to represent our union, both in set A and in set B. So any element that lies inside these two circles are the elements that mix up A, junior B. And that is that about intersection and junior. What about complement? We look at another Venn diagram. Let me put that here. So I'm putting this here to show complement. So let's look at two sets also. This is set A and set B. So to show A complement, it's just it's the same thing as B complement, but we are going to be using A complement. Since we have our universal sets, these are universal sets. Okay, let me put this in this other two. So these are universal sets U that covers everything that we have in these shapes. So if I have to look for A complement, which is A prime, there are the elements that are in the universal set that are not in set A. And that will range from all the side, except from that circle, the marketing A. So L F elements that we have outside of circle A forms the part of our A complement, which is A prime. So this is the set representing A complement. Just a quick tip. And if you're looking at only one set, for example, if you have a Venn diagram, if you have only one set, let's say this is set B, then to show B prime, which is B complement, it's going to be all the elements that falls outside of circle representing B. So all the elements that falls in this range, they are B complement. So let's clean this off. You can now use this technique to look for Venn diagram of more complicated operations. For example, if you have two sets, A and B, and we have to use Venn diagram to represent A union B complement. A union B complement. So how do we represent this? So let's take a look at a Venn diagram. Here we have set A. Let me clean this. Set A and set B. So this is A and this is B. So we are looking for A union B complement. Now, these are the sets that represent a union B, all the sets or all the elements that falls inside of these two circles. So these are a union B, as you see in the previous slide. Now, if you are looking for a union B complement, then that will be all the elements that falls outside of these two circles. Then we have all our elements to be elements that falls outside of these two circles. And the element A represents a union B complement. And lastly, let's look at another operation. Here we have to find A intersection B complement. Intersection B prime. A intersection B prime. So we look for intersection of B prime and A. So let's look at the Venn diagram here. You have to set as usual set A and set B. This is A and this is B. Now, to make this more clearer, we are going to be using two, two strokes. Now, the first one is A. So th these are the sets representing A. Okay, all these points. This is A. And the second one is B complement, which is B prime. So to look for B prime, these are the sets that falls outside of the circle representing B. And this includes something like this. Let's use vertical strokes here. So we are not going to have inside of this circle because it's also part of B. So let's clean this off. So these are the elements or the space representing B complement. Now, if you look at this point, where the red strokes and the yellow strokes intersect, these are the points that represent A intersection B complement. And you can easily use this technique 
to solve any form of equations where a and b complement intersect inside the point that falls in this range and to bring this out more clearly let me just redraw this this is set a and this is set b so a intersection b complement will now be all element that falls in this range and that is simply how to look for some complex set equations. Now let's look at some real life examples. This is the first example we are going to be looking at. The question says, in a survey of 15 students, 8 of them like science, while 10 of them like art. Find a number that liked both science and art, if each of them like at least one of the two departments. If we look at this question, we are going to see that what we are being asked is to look for science intersection art science intersection at so let universal set be all the students a set of all the students and set s b set of all students that like science And set A to be equal to all students like hats. So we now have universal set set S as student that like science and set it to send that like art. Now let's use Venn diagram to represent this. Here we are looking at only two sets, which is set S and set A. So we have two sets. S and set A. This is set S and this is set A. As we mentioned before, that we are looking for intersection of science and math. So we are looking for element that we false in this range. But for the meantime, let's clean this off. Now, going back to the question, in the sphere of 15 students, so our inverse set has 15 elements and 8 of them like science, while 10 of them like art. Since this is our inverse set, so the number is 15. Number of students that like science, they are 8. And number of students that like art, they are 10. Now, let's note some things in this question. That a survey is being conducted on 15 students. 8 of them like science and 10 of them like art. So possibly, some students like both science and art. Because if you add 8 and 10, we are going to have... 18, which is more than the number of students in which the survey is being conducted. Invariably, what we are saying is that out of these 8 that like science, some of them are still going to like art, and out of these 10 that like art, some of them are still going to like science. So, that now be S intersection A, which is the point A. So, we don't know the number that like both science and art, and that is what we are looking for. Now, to get the number that like only science, we are going to subtract x from here and to get the number that like only at you are going to subtract x from here also i hope that makes sense let's look at the different diagram once again if all these points all these circles represent students like science and this small part represents students that like science and art therefore this part will represent students that like only science while this part represents students that like only art and this part represents students that like both science and art. Now let's look back, go back to the question. We were given that universal set equals to 15, which is the number of students that the survey was conducted on. So therefore, if you add the number of students that like only science plus the number of students that like only art plus the number of students that like both science and art, you are supposed to derive at the number 15, which is the number of students in which the question we asked. So the number of students that like only science, there are 8 minus x. Plus number of students that liked only, only at 10 minus x. Plus number of students that liked both science and at that is x. And the answer must be equal to 15. So from this, we solve for x. So 8 minus x plus 10 minus x plus x equals 15. And here we have 8 plus 10 minus x minus x plus x equals 15. Here we have 0 and 8 plus 10 is 
18 minus x equals to 15. And we have our x to be equals to 18 minus 15. And that's equals 3. So we now have number of students that like both signs and x to be equals to 3. Now that is what we are being asked to look for in this question. Find a number that like both signs and x. So that is that about this question. Just to redraw this Venn diagram, we can now redraw it as this. We have set S and set A. This set S and set A. We have infrared set to be equal to 15. So the number of students that like only signs will now be 8 minus 3, which is equal to 5. Number of students that like signs and art, that is 3. And number of students that like only art, that will be 10 minus 3, which is 7. So if you add 5 and 3 and 7, we are going to have 15. And that is simply how we can look for intersection of a set. Let's move to the next question. We have another one here. In a sophia of some adults, each person had visited at least either of Ghana or Kenya. Ten of the adults had visited Ghana while 14 had visited Kenya. If four of them had visited both countries, find the first one, the number of the adults that had visited Ghana but not Kenya. The second question, the number of the adults that have visited Kenya but not Ghana. And the third one, the number of the the total number of the adults involved in the survey. So let's continue. Also representing this, we are going to be using universal set u to be equal to the set of all the adults and set g to be equal to all the adults that have visited Ghana and set k to be equal to all the adults that have visited Kenya. Again, we represent this using a Venn diagram. So this universal set U, and you have two sets, set G and K. Now going back to the question, let's bring out some points. Here we have 10 of the adults have visited Ghana, while 14 have visited Kenya. Now, we have here, yeah, if four of them had visited both countries, so we only have four that have visited both Ghana and Kenya. So at this point of intersection, we have four. For the sake of clarity, we should now write 10 here directly, that 10 has visited Ghana. Because this four is part of Ghana, so if you put 10, so that means we are saying 10 plus 4 has visited Ghana. But we should put x here. So since this point represents the bull that has visited only Ghana, but not Kenya. But this point, point x and point 4 must be equal to 10. And also for Kenya, we should put y here. Since we are looking for people that have visited only Kenya, we already know people that have visited Kenya, but we don't know people that have visited both only Kenya and only Ghana. I'm bringing this out. We have number of students that have number of adults that have visited Ghana to be equal to ten, a number of adults that have visited Kenya, which equals to fourteen. So the yeah, number of students that have visited only Ghana represents X, a number of students, number of adults that have visited only Kenya represents Y. And since we know that number of students that have visited Ghana, including people that have visited Kenya, is ten. And number of students, number of adults that have visited Kenya included number of students, number of adults that have visited Ghana is four. What am I saying, students? Okay, it's adults. So we can say that x plus four equals to ten. This x is number of students that are, number of again that's a student. This x represents number of adults that have visited only Ghana, and this four represents number of adults that have visited both Ghana and Kenya. And since we know the total number must be equal to 10, so we can say that our x equals to 6. And for Kenya, we have y plus 4 equals to 14. And we have y equals to 10. So the number of adults that have visited only Kenya is 10. And the number of adults that have visited only Ghana is 6. So that is the first one. So this is the first question and this is the second question. Hope that makes sense. 
the most challenging thing in answering questions on Venn diagram is to know how to interpret the questions. As soon as you can interpret the questions, every other thing will be quite simple. Now the third one is the number of the total number of adults involved in the survey. Here we say that x equals to 6 and y equals to 10. So adding 6, 4 and 10, you are going to have the number of adults that were involved in the survey. So here we have 6 plus 4 plus 10 and this equals 20. So 20 adults were involved in this survey and 6 of them has visited only Ghana but not Kenya and 10 of them had visited only Kenya but not Ghana while 4 of them had visited both Ghana and Kenya and that is that about sets involving that is about questions involving two sets let's move to questions involving three sets now let's look at operations involving three sets all right since the number of sets have increased the technically also increased but not to worry we are going to simplify them all in this tutorial just as we look at the Venn diagram of some operations involving two sets, let's do the same for three sets. Now, we are now looking at three sets. And we look at set A, okay, A, B, and C. And also, we look at the three operations, union, intersection, and complement. Let me clean this off. Yes. So, the first one is intersection. So I'm assuming if you have three sets, just as we mentioned, sets A, B, and C. This is set A. Oh, let me clean this off. And we now have sets A, B, and set C. And these are usual sets. So to represent A intersection, B intersection, C, that would be this point where A, B, and C met. So now I have this one to be A, intersection B, intersection C. And that's about intersection of three sets. The second one is union. Again, we use another set. We use another Venn diagram. So there, this we have set A, set B, and set C. We're this A, B, C. And just as we see for the two sets, all the points covering this circle refers to A, Junior B, Junior C. That's as we have here. So every element that falls in this circle. So this is A, Junior B, Junior C. This is Junior not B. It's not even you, it's like something like you. Yes. This A junior B junior C. And lastly, that is complement. If we look at it, A complement, if you have a Venn diagram and also containing three sets, A, B, and C. So these are sets A, B, and C. So if you are to represent the points A complement, A complement, so these are interest sets. In further sets, so these are the points that lies outside of the circle A, and this includes all these points. So, in as much as we didn't include the circle A, so those are the complements of A that is, the elements that are in the inferior sets that are not in sets A. So, this is how we can represent intersection, union, and complements using Venn diagram. Again, let's look at some advanced operation. The first one, if you are to find A intersection, A complement intersection, B intersection, C. So here we are to find A complement intersection, B intersection, C. Again, let's look at a Venn diagram that contains sets A, B, and C. This is A, B, and C. So this set A, set B, and set C. In further set. So just as we see for Venn diagram in following two sets, the same method will also be applied there. So the first one we are going to look for is A complement, which are all elements that falls outside of 
circle A. And this includes all the elements that falls here, represented with the yellow strokes. Okay, this is a complement. And second one is B. So it says B. Let me change. Okay. Set B in fourth order element that lies in circle B and using a vertical stroke here. You have these strokes, yes. So this is set of set B. And the third one is set C, which are all elements that falls inside of circle C. Okay. Let me use a slant and I, something like this. Now we are looking for A complement intersection B intersection C. If you look at this point, this point, you can see that that's where we have all the strokes that intersect. We have the yellow strokes, the red stroke, and the blue stroke that intersect at this point. So we have this point to be A complement intersection B intersection C. To make that more clear, let me redraw this. Okay. So I'm going to redraw this. Oh, this is big. This is set A, set B, and set C. If you look at this part, you're going to see that this is the point where all the strokes intersect. So we have this point. To be A, complement intersection B. Intersection C. So using that method, that's how you can find all operations involving three sets on Venn diagram. Just use your strokes and wherever the intersect or wherever the join, that is the point we are looking for. I'm not going to do this, but try it if, I, if you can get it. Try to use Venn diagram to represent the operation A, complement intersection B, intersection C. And I would like to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Thank you. This is our first question under three sets. I have the question that says that all the 50 science students in the college in Nigeria were asked the subject combinations. 18 of the students offered further mathematics, 21 offered chemistry, while 16 offered biology. 7 offered further mathematics and chemistry, 8 students offered further mathematics and biology, 9 students offered chemistry and biology, while 5 students offered all the three subject combinations. Using Venn diagram, find the first one, the number of students that offered for the mathematics, but neither chemistry nor biology. The second one, the number of students that offered chemistry, but neither for the mathematics nor biology. And the third one, the number of students that offered biology, but neither for the mathematics nor chemistry. Why the fourth one says we should find number of students who did not offer any of the three subject combination. This is quite some long questions, but to start with, let's use our Venn diagram or some representations such as Let's use the inverse set to be the all 50 students. And set F or M, let's use M, to be equal to number of students over for the mathematics. And set C to be equal to number of students that over chemistry. And set B to be number of students that offered biology. Let's now put this information in a Venn diagram. And here we have a Venn diagram. It's going to be made up of three sets. Let's just make the circle to be bigger. Oh, that's big. So here we have set M, which is further mathematics, set C, which is chemistry, and set B, which is biology. And note that this can be in any order. We can put set B here and change this to set M, or any I want to put, let me just put set B, and let's return this back to set M. But it can be in any order. So let's bring out all our values. Let's go in back to the question. From the question, we have that. We are considering 50 students and 18 of the students 
offered further mathematics. 21 offered chemistry, 16 offered biology, 7 offered further mathematics and chemistry, 8 students offered further mathematics and biology, and 9 students offered chemistry and biology, while 5 students offered all the 3 subject combinations. So here you are going to have further mathematics to be 18, chemistry to be 21, yes, and biology to be 16. Now, just as we see in the previous examples, note that this 18 represents all the number of students that are offering for the mathematics, including those that might likely be offering biology and chemistry with it. And 21A represents the number that are offering chemistry, including those that might be offering for the mathematics and chemistry, or those that might be offering biology and chemistry. Now, to continue, we have seven students offering for the mathematics and chemistry. So, here we have seven students. Also, we have eight students offering for the mathematics and biology. So, you have eight here. And we have nine students offering chemistry and biology. So, you have nine. Here. And five students offering all the three subject combinations. The reason why I'm putting these numbers at the edge is because we might likely do some subtractions. Now, here we have 18 students offering for the mathematics. We have eight offering for the mathematics and biology. And we have five offering all the five subject combinations. So to get the number offering only for the mathematics and biology, we are going to subtract 5 from here. And the same thing applicable to all other parts, we subtract 5 and also we subtract 5. So 9 minus 5 is now the number of students offering only biology and chemistry. While 7 minus 5 is the number offering only for the mathematics and chemistry. While 8 minus 5 is the number offering only mathematics and biology while five is the number of students offering all these three subject combinations so that is why we are subtracting five from this and now to get the number of students that is that are offering only mathematics that is for the mathematics but they are not offering chemistry and biology so we are going to subtract what we have here what we have here and what we have here from 18. so this is minus eight minus five is three minus five and this is minus seven minus five which is two the same time applicable here, we subtract 21, we subtract 9 minus 5, which is 4, minus 5, the 5 we have at the center, and minus 7 minus 5, which is 2. The same thing here, we subtract 8 minus 5 from here, that is 3, this is minus 5, and 9 minus 5, which is 4. So, whatever we have here, is the number of students offering only biology? What if I have here is the number of students offering only chemistry? And what if I have here is the number of students offering only mathematics? Now let's write out our answers. So the first one is the number of students offering further mathematics, but neither chemistry nor biology. And using Venn notations, we can represent that with this the number of students offering mathematics intersection C prime intersection B prime. Not to worry about this much. And if you look at this part, this is our answer. So we now have 18 minus 3 minus 5 minus 2, which equals to 8. The second question, the number of students offering chemistry, but neither for the mathematics nor biology. And we have that here, which equals to number of students offering only chemistry intersection for the mathematics prime intersection biology prime. And that equals to 21 minus 4 minus 5 minus 2 and the answer here is 10. The third one which is the number of students offering only biology so we have number of students offering only biology intersection for the mathematics prime intersection chemistry prime and that's equal to 16 minus 3 minus 5 minus 4 and we have answer there to be 4. And the last question says the number of students who did not offer any of the three subject combination to get this, that means we have some students outside of these three circles. Let's use x to represent the number. So this x is outside of these three circles. And since we know that our universal set equals to 50, so we can also subtract all the elements of this set from 50 and we get the number of elements that are outside the circle. So we now have 50 minus the number of students offering only for the mathematics, that is 8 from here. Minus the number of students offering only chemistry, that is 10. 
on the number of strengths of the only biology that is four. So we have gotten that. Now minus the number of strengths that are offering only mathematics and chemistry. That is seven minus two, which is two. Seven minus five, which is two. The same thing, we subtract this as is minus four. And we subtract this also. That is minus three. And we subtract the middle, which is number of strengths offering all the three subject combination. That is five. And the answer here equals to 14. So we now have 14 students that are offering neither of these three subject combinations, mathematics, chemistry, and biology. And that is an approach on how you can attempt questions involving three sets. Note that what you have here inside of these three circles are the number of students that are offering biology, including those that might be offering other subjects too. So you just know how to separate them the number that are offering only biology, the number that are offering only chemistry, and the number that are offering only for the mathematics. Let's look at another question. Here's an exercise for you. Feel free to pause this video now and try to work this out. And when we are done, you can play the video and let's solve this together. Okay, now the question is this. Say, in a hotel, the breakfast menu is a choice between yam, y, or plantain, p, or both. The Venn diagram shows the choice made by 25 guests of the hotel. Find the value of x. This is what we have been looking at before. Here we have the inferior set u to be equals to 25. And since the total number of guests equals 25, that is the inferior set. If you add this, this, and this, we should arrive at 25. So, implementing that, we have 2x plus 1 plus x plus x minus 2 squared equals to 25. And then we have 2x plus 1 plus x plus this is quadratic if we expand this bracket we're going to have x square minus 4x plus 4 equals 25 and then we have x squared minus x plus 5 equals 25 okay this equals to minus 20 equals to 0 and if you try to solve this quadratically we're going to have x plus 4 x plus 4 x minus 5 to be equal to 0 so therefore we have our x to be equal to negative 4 or 5 and since it's x x cannot be negative so we now have our x to be equal to 5 and that's how we can solve for x in this question you can check this by substituting x to be equal to 5 and add this up you're going to arrive at 25 this will be the last question in this tutorial. Feel free to pause the video and work this out. And when you are done, we can solve it together. The Venn diagram shows the choice of food of visitors to a canteen. Use the information to answer the following question. The first one, if there were 35 visitors in all, find the value of x. And second one, how many people took at least two kinds of food? In first set equals to 35. And then we don't have to struggle too much. We already been given the numbers. It's just to compete. So the first one is to find the value of x just as we saw in the last example adding all this must have 35 so if you add 5 plus 5 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 6 plus x this one will be equal to 35 and computing this we have x to be equal to 5 so we now have x to be equal to 5 and the second one which is the last question how many people took at least two kind of food how many people took at least two kind of food? Here we have two people took rice and a food L and P. Four people took rice and I don't know which food is L. And six people took P and R. And we have X that took all the three. So to find the number of people that took at least two kind of food, we are going to have four plus six plus two plus x which is equal to 5 so this equals to 17 so something people took at least two kind of food actually x people which is 5 people took all the three kind of food but we have people that took at least two kind of food to be equal to 17 4 plus 6 plus 2 plus 5 and that's it for this tutorial thank you if you need to practice 
I have a question here. Try to check this out, and the answers are shown below. So feel free to post your questions or answers in the comment section below. If you have any problems solving this question, feel free once again to post it in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and share the video. Thank you.